Joyce Meyer Ministries dankt haar donateurs die deze uitzending mogelijk maakten. You will wrestle with yourself and you will be angry at yourself and the devil will convince you that God is mad at you daily until you understand the revelation of grace. Living without frustration. Father, we thank you for the word tonight, and I pray that every heart will truly get a better revelation on just really how amazing grace is. You know, I think we've talked about amazing grace so long that we've forgotten how amazing it really is. <laughs> we have a tendency sometimes to do that in our churchy atmosphere. You know, we... We talk about things and we talk about them so much that we forget the real value of them. What an, what an amazing song they sang at the offering time about grace. Maybe he'll sing that again this weekend. Next time we can really pay attention to the words. Grace is amazing. And let me just show you how absolutely amazing it is. We're going to look at Romans chapter 5 beginning in verse 6. And I'm actually going to share four verses with you. I want you to look at a lot of word with me tonight, and I want us to digest these things slowly and see if we can grasp a hold of just what it is that God has done for us by His grace. I think if we knew for sure, really had a revelation of what all God's done for us, we'd never have another sad day in our life. Amen? Amen? Romans chapter 5, verse 6. While we were yet in weakness, powerless to help ourselves, at the fitting time, Christ died for in behalf of the ungodly. Somebody say, amazing. amazing. <laughs> now, it is an extraordinary thing for one to give his life, even for an upright man, though he might for a noble and a loyal and a generous benefactor, someone might dare to die. You know, he's saying that it, it would be a, an extraordinary thing for anybody to give their life, even for just like this most awesome, wonderful person. But to die for sinners who didn't care Many who hadn't even, most who hadn't even been born yet, didn't know you, didn't want anything to do with you. That's another whole realm of amazing. But God shows and clearly proves his own love for us by the fact that while we were still sinners, Christ the Messiah, the anointed one, died for us. Amazing. While you were still running around in the bar, getting drunk, night after night after night, not caring one thing about God at all. He had already died for you, already paid the price for all your sins, already had a great life planned for you, and you don't have to do anything to get it except believe and receive. My, 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 my. You know, if you're born again, I'm looking at somebody tonight that's not going to hell. That ought to keep us happy for a little while. Man, the next time you get sad, go look at yourself in the mirror and say, I am not going to hell. Hallelujah. Wow. I am not going to hell. Verse 9, therefore, since we are now justified, when justified? When? Oh, you mean not after we improve our behavior? Now? We're now justified. You know what the word justified means? Made just as if I've never sinned. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> made just as if I've never sinned. Since we are now justified, acquitted, made righteous, and brought into right relationship with God by Christ's blood, how much more certain is it that we shall be saved by him from the indignation and the wrath of God? Good news, God is not mad at you. Hallelujah! God is not mad at you. 
I am so weary of people thinking that God is an ogre that gets mad every time they don't behave perfectly. God is good. He loves you. He's already paid the price for your freedom. Get a smile on your face and start loving him back. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. Now get this last part. If while we were enemies of God, we were reconciled to God through the death of his son. If when we did not even care one iota, God sent his son to die for us. It is much more certain now that we are reconciled that we shall be saved, daily delivered from sin's dominion through his resurrection life. Amazing! So you know what? God didn't save us, kind of throw us the football and say, now here, you make the touchdown. The same way that we are saved, this, all these people who receive Christ tonight, Hundreds and hundreds standing to receive Christ. They didn't do anything. They just said, yes, I want that. <laughs> yes, I'll take that. Oh, free gift? Yes, I want that. Now, that was a manifestation of the grace of God in action to, in a moment of just receiving the truth of God's Word, a whole lifetime of sin, not just your life from here backwards, but when God forgives your sin, it's all your sin. Even the ones you're going to commit tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day. That's why we don't have to be afraid of sin because God has taken care of the problem. Oh, well, you can't talk to people like that. I mean, if they're not afraid of sin, they might just go out and sin tomorrow on purpose. Well, no, not really. Not if you really were born again and you really have that relationship with God, there is a new nature on the inside of you now. And all you may still do wrong things, but I'll tell you something, you can't do them and be comfortable. You cannot do it and be comfortable because now you've got something else, a new law working on the inside of you. And the more we feed that new spirit, the more we give the right kind of word to that new spirit, the stronger it gets, 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 and that old flesh that tries to control us just doesn't even have a chance. If while we were enemies of the cross, now some of you are wrestling with some terrible issues in your life. Temper, bitterness, unforgiveness, habits, addictions, all kinds of things. And the devil would love to have you think that God's mad at you and put this big gap between you and God. But the truth is, God is love. It's not something he does on Monday and not on Tuesday. It's not something he does when we're good and doesn't, and then stops doing it when we're bad. God loves us all the time. He loved us before we ever even cared so much that he sent his only son to die for us. So how much more now that we are redeemed, how much more now can we be daily delivered from sin's dominion, sin no longer can have dominion over you because sin is no longer your master. You have a new master, and the more you know that, the less you're going to sin. Good news. For by grace are you saved through faith, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9. I want to teach you how to live. For by grace are you saved through faith. I'll read it. We'll read it in the Amplified. It is by free grace, God's unmerited favor, that you're saved, delivered from judgment, and made a partaker of Christ's salvation. And it comes through your faith. By grace, through faith. By grace, through faith. Faith does not buy salvation. It receives salvation. Faith is a hand that reaches out and receives the free gift of God. Okay? That's why it wasn't difficult to receive salvation tonight because we told you about a free gift and you said, I'll, I'll take that. <laughs> and maybe somebody held out and said, well, I don't deserve that. I got to get myself fixed up first. Eh, eh, eh. You're trying to buy a free gift. You cannot buy a free gift. It is not possible to buy a free gift. It's quite insulting to our flesh because the flesh wants to earn and deserve. 
It wants to take credit. Well, I have this great relationship with God because I this and I that and I something else. No, while we were still sinners, he died for us. It is by free grace that you're saved, made a partaker of God's salvation. Let's put those scriptures back up, please. Made a partaker of Christ's salvation through your faith, and this salvation is not of yourselves. It is not of your own doing. It came not through your own striving, but it is the gift of God. Verse 9. Not because of works, not the fulfillment of the law's demands, lest any man should boast. It is not the result of what anyone can possibly do, so no one can pride himself in it or take glory to himself. Now, that's the way we're saved. And, you know, to be honest with you, most people don't have a problem with that. I mean, it's like, you're like, yeah, amen, yeah, ooh, glory. Yes, I want to be saved. Okay, now, <laughs> Colossians 2, 6, look at this. I'm making a case here. As you therefore received Christ, how did we receive him? By grace, through faith. As you therefore receive Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk and regulate your lives and conduct yourselves in union and conformity to him. Now here's my message. The same way that we receive Christ, that's the same way we gotta live. <laughs> And so you don't know how, a few, a few people up here who know the word, they're saying, great, great, great. But you don't know how great it is. <laughs> because when you really understand what I just said, that takes the pressure off. Now all of a sudden, you don't live by your trying and your effort. I don't live by my struggling, my trying, my effort, and then always getting frustrated because no matter what I'm doing, it's not working. How many of you have tried self-improvement? Has anybody ever gone to a session like this? You heard somebody preach on something. You were so convicted. Oh, my God, yes, I have a problem with that. And you made a plan to go home and change. Anybody ever did that? How many of you didn't change? You know why? Because the same way you were saved, <laughs> by grace, through faith, is the same way you have to change. What God wants us to do is say, God, you're right. I am convicted by that word. I have a big problem in that area, and I want to change, but I cannot change unless you change me. You have to do it, God, and I'm depending on you, and I'm trusting you, and I'm believing in you to do whatever needs to be done in my life. You will wrestle with yourself, and you will be angry at yourself. And the devil will convince you that God is mad at you daily until you understand the revelation of grace. We have to live by grace. Now, see, the, it'll take me four sessions to get this across. <laughs> now, one young lady standing there going, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know why? Because it's just too good. You know what it is? It's amazing. It's amazing grace. We're going to understand what amazing grace really is by the time we get out of here. It is amazing what God has done for us. And when Jesus ascended on high to sit down at the right hand of the Father, he sent the Holy Spirit to represent him to be in his place, who now lives in every believer in the Lord Jesus Christ. He is not just with, he is in us, and he will do through us what needs to be done if we will just stop trying to do it ourselves and let God work. God can do more in you in five minutes than you can do in 25 years of trying. Because all it takes is one revelation. We got enough information, we need revelation. I mean, we are drowning in information in America. We need revelation on the Word of God. Amen? Amen? And I believe, as the Word is preached this weekend, that there is an anointing on it that is going to open blind eyes, and I'm talking right now about spiritually blind eyes, 
I'm fine if some physical ones open too, but open those spiritually blind eyes and those spiritually deaf ears, and maybe you've heard it a thousand times, amazing grace, how sweet it is. But I think when you leave this weekend or tonight or however many times you can come, you are going to go say, amazing. Grace is so unbelievably amazing. And then when we really understand what God has done for us, we get so thankful and so grateful, and we love God so much that we just can't help ourselves. We have to just try to do as much as we can to please Him, not because we think we have to, but because we want to. Yeah. Amen. Amazing. Grace is, we've all heard this, God's riches at Christ's expense, G-R-A-C-E. But you know, sometimes that can almost sound a little bit too spiritually fluffy religious and we miss it. <laughs> it's undeserved favor. And boy, we'd have to think about that for a long time because most people don't do much for you that you don't deserve. Or they will give you what you do deserve. And God doesn't do either. <laughs> he blesses us when we deserve to have our behinds kicked. Amen? And he does things for us that we don't deserve. Now, that doesn't mean that God doesn't chastise us and deal with us to teach us and train us how to behave properly, but he never stops loving us. But I have a JM definition of grace. This is my own. This is coming from the JM Dictionary. After 37 years of teaching the Word, I now have the right to give definitions. So here it comes. I believe that grace is, yes, undeserved favor, but it is God's power made available to us, free of charge, enabling us to do with ease what we could never do on our own with any amount of struggle and effort. And I know you need it again, so here it comes. Grace is power. It's power to do what needs to be done, but to do it without struggle and without effort, to do it in the rest of God and to do it with ease, and it's a free gift. You still need it again? We're going to... <laughs> And I, I know your little flesh is just screaming out, well, surely there's something I have to do. Well, we could start with believing. That's why we're called believers. <laughs> if we were supposed to achieve, we'd be called achievers. But we are believers. And the word believe means to receive, and the word receive means to believe. So tonight, when those people receive Christ, they believed that Jesus had died for their sins and that he was willing to forgive them and that he would give them a better life. And so they believed, and the moment they believed, they received. When you believe, you receive. When you receive, you believe. You can't separate the two. Believing is receiving. And Hebrews 4 says that when we believe, what happens? We do enter the rest of God. You know why I have fun in my meetings? Oh, my gosh, when I first started doing this, I thought the pressure would kill me. I mean, I would pray so hard before I got to my meetings, I was half dead already just from the exhaustion of, you know, I couldn't talk to anybody and I wouldn't do this. I wouldn't do that. <laughs> Had to stir up the anointing. <laughs> you know, I've learned the best way to live is just live the same way all the time. I don't have to come up here and act one way and act another way somewhere else. God wants us to be, not put on an act. Israel didn't look to me like he was stressed out tonight leading worship. I saw him before. He was pretty much the same back there as he was out here. Now, you step into a different kind of gifting. But the truth is, is this, I'm very comfortable doing this, and I enjoy doing it. You know why? Because 
I'm doing the part that God's given me to do. I studied, I prepared, I showed up. The rest is up to him. I said, I studied, I prepared, I showed up. The rest is up to him. You know what frustration is? Trying to do something that you can't do. Trying to make something happen that you cannot make happen. You see, when I first started doing this, I thought I had to make everybody like me. Oh, that was killing me. Because I'd get funny looks, and maybe some people would get up and leave, and I, you know, they were going to the bathroom or something, but the devil's telling me, they don't like your preaching, they're leaving, you know. <laughs> and I said, oh, they don't like me, they don't like me, oh, God, they don't like me. <laughs> then, you know, maybe if I said something, somebody made a face, I'd think, oh, I better say something else. And so, you know, I was doing everything to try to be liked. And one day I decided, you know what, God? It is not my responsibility to make those people like me. It is my responsibility to go out there and do what I believe you're telling me to do. And God, if anybody likes me, you'll have to cause it. I mean, I get up here and yell at people. How, you know, how can anybody like me if God doesn't make them like me? And yet you keep coming and 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 keep coming. You know what? You don't have to go out every day with the fear of man all over you, being manipulated and controlled by other people's whims because you're afraid of somebody not liking you. You can say in the morning, God, if anybody likes me today, you're going to have to make them like me. And if they don't like me, God, then that is your problem. just tell you now, you have no choice but to like me because I've already given it to God. <laughs> Therefore, I can be free tonight because I already believe that God is going to give me whoever I need in my life and whatever I need. I, I don't have any pressure. You know, did I, did I act pressured when I was receiving the offering tonight? I didn't put any pressure on anybody. I don't have to try to manipulate you and control you. You know why? Because if God ordered this, he's going to pay for it. I don't have to play little funny games trying to, to get your money. You either want to give or you don't. And I want you to do it with a smile on your face, and I want you to do it because you believe you're sowing into good ground that's bearing good fruit, and you want to be part of that. Amen? God's got to pay for what he orders. If he wants me doing it, he'll provide the income. He obviously does because the bills are all paid. So therefore, there's no struggle. I work hard, but what I do is not hard. I mean, I work really hard. I will be tired physically when I go home, but it's not hard for me to do what I do because I'm doing it all by the grace of God. Now, I'll tell you what's hard. One full 24-hour period of being angry and, unre and resentful and mad at somebody and in unforgiveness. Now, that will just about kill me. And here's the difference. I'm working hard, but I'm not working internally. When you're angry, you can be sitting in a chair, but you're working so hard internally that it's killing you. One full day of full-blown worry and anxiety can just about do you in. I would rather do three of these conferences back-to-back, -back, four sessions each, than to spend one whole day, I mean, rip-roaring mad at somebody. That just about does me in. I can't handle that. So if we can learn how to receive the grace of God and let God do things through us, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. It's not just a little scripture that we quote, but you really can. Whatever God wants you to do, you can do it by the grace of God. You say, well, then why am I so frustrated? <laughs> well, we're going to get there. You know, I got a lamp over here. And I... Why is there no light here? I don't You're a lamp. You're supposed to be getting one. Where's the light? For crying out loud. Oh, it's not plugged in. Oh, it needs to be plugged in. 
Oh. Oh. Wow, that was easy. Okay, it's like this. If there's a power source here, the power source is God. <laughs> Come on, somebody's getting it already. <laughs> See how smart you are? Revelation. There's a power source right here. Well, it's not the power's fault if the lamp is not plugged in. So here's what we need to do. We just need to plug in. Every time that you feel frustrated, take a moment and plug in. Every time you feel worn out, take a moment and plug in. Don't you dare go out your door in the morning without making sure that you are a full charge, that all of your batteries are fully charged up. Well, you know, we all have two choices in life. We can live a life filled with frustration or we can humble ourselves and we can ask God to help us. We can receive his free gift of grace to help us. And that's exactly what we should be doing. Together, we are providing desperately needed medical care. We're feeding hungry children. We're giving homes to orphans. And you and I, with God's help, are doing more than we could ever do on our own. We are Joyce Meyer Ministries Hand of Hope, and we appreciate you for being a part of it. Wilt u meehelpen de wereld te veranderen? Word dan onze partner en doneer regelmatig. Wij sturen u graag kostenloos onze brochure toe. Vraag deze aan door te bellen naar 026 20 22 100 of ga naar joyce-meyer.nl partner.